financial independence, country shopping, van nomadism, security culture, ethical enclaves, crypto anarchy, legal interstices, survivalism. Join your host Shane and Kyle as they explore this freedom strategy known as Vaughn. You're listening to the Vani Podcast. And welcome to the Vani Podcast. I'm Shane and... I'm Kyle. Ooh, switch it up a little bit there. I like that. I like that. <laughs> we're, we're certainly glad you decided to join us today. The Vani Podcast is covered by a BIPCOT no government license. Where use and modification is permitted to anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can learn more at BIPCOT.org. The title of this episode is Political Crusading, Bullshit Libertarianism, Sheep People, and Bullshitters. And the show notes can be found at vonnypodcast.com forward slash five. I know, I know, that's a mouthful. But those are all terms used by Ray in his book, Vonnie, The Search for Personal Freedom. And uh, I find it absolutely, absolutely hilarious. (laughs) That said, uh, go pick up your free copy of his book. Just visit vonnypodcast.com and click on the second tab labeled Free Vonnie Book. You can also catch the audiobook there as well. First off, if you, if you haven't gone and uh, checked out the aforementioned website, please do. There's a lot of valuable information there already, and more will be added in time. So, uh, Kyle, uh, how the hell are you, man? Uh, not too bad, I suppose, although some days are better than others. How about you? Going good, going good. Getting a little uh, frustrated. Uh, actually, it relates perfectly to this uh, to this uh, broadcast we're gonna have tonight. Uh, as uh, you know, I'm getting a little pissed off with uh, this uh, political crusading and advocacy for uh, Fuhrer Trump. So uh, I think this is gonna work out just perfectly. <laughs> All hail His Majesty the Rug, God Emperor Trump. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyways, that said, in this episode we'll define the aforementioned terms, tell you what Rayo had to say about it, and we'll close out with a quite interesting history lesson. <laughs> Okay, so political crusading and bullshit libertarianism. So to define that, any attempt at working inside of the system in order to change it from within. In other words, it is applied collectivism. I would also say that Rayo's derisive term of bullshit libertarianism is synonymous with our frustration when it comes to inconsistent libertarians and is one reason I dropped that bullshit label completely. Uh, it's also, you know, the partyarchy of the LP. Now, Kyle, I, I really don't uh, think there's any need to define sheep people and bullshitters. <laughs> what do you think? I'll, I'll just assume the audience kind of knows what we're getting at. Basically, the mainstream uh, public, plus people who think that they can affect change by changing laws just because, well, they get up in front of a camera or a microphone and, and say a lot of... they say a lot of sweet nothings into the ears of their audiences, telling people that fall softly on their ears, in other words. Uh, Yep. Yep, indeed, indeed. So, there's going to be so much to talk about with just these quotes, so I'm just going to get right into what Rayo said with with this this, uh, first quote. So, Objections of the political crusaders to self-liberation, mostly innuendos, ex-cathedra pronouncements, and misrepresentations, have been refuted by me, Spring Innovator, page 7 to 47, and others. But the Crusaders have consistently failed to refute or even acknowledge serious objections to any would-be libertarian political movement. But, while I reject political crusading as a strategy, this does not mean I shun active resistance as a tactic. The self-liberator has tactical advantages over a would-be insurrectionist of any brand. The political crusader who wants to take over or destroy a state seriously threatens the rulers and will bring strong countermeasures. Well, that actually kind of seems applicable here. But uh, anyways, back to the quote. But the libertarian who is satisfied to coexist in protracted conflict with the state is merely an annoyance. The more astute ruler is aware, as is the libertarian, that most people are sheep and will remain sheep no matter how the libertarian lives. Of course, the statist would still rather squash the libertarian if this were easy. So libertarian tactics must be such as to make counter counterattacks ineffective and prohibitively costly, end quote. So, uh, you know, Kyle, first thing that comes to mind here, and this is just, this is what's on my mind. So, uh, uh, so, so yeah, just, just bear with me. But, uh, uh, but yeah, the, uh, he mentions, um, the political crusader wants to take over or destroy a state seriously threatens the rulers and they'll bring strong countermeasures. Well, 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 I don't know. Uh, kind of, uh, <laughs> I think the, uh, countermeasures, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the, the, uh, current, uh, American political system will face with, uh, you know, what, uh, what Trump's attempting to do is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be uh, actually counterintuitive. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I don't think, you know, going and begging those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers is going to bring about any sort of notion of freedom or liberty, and certainly not an invulnerability to coercion. Um, you know, relying on that strongman archetype to do all the heavy lifting for you is, is really just kind of silly. And I remember even years ago when some people were even attributing that to even uh, the elder Ron Paul, interestingly enough. But of course, uh, Ron Paul couldn't even get uh, his, uh, you know, the GOP's nomination either in 2008 or 2012. But the second that Trump did, oh boy, now it's on. Now he made it to the general election like this means something. Even though it, the truth is actually it's the Electoral College that elects the president, not uh, the average American voter. But of course, no matter how many patriots and other people I told that to, it just kind of seemed to fall on deaf ears for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. And it, it's completely anti vonuin It's completely anti anti vonuin when you consider, uh, I mean, just, just to witness the, the, the amount of anarchists and, and libertarians, so-called libertarians, rather, and so-called anarchists, actually, too. But, uh, you know, just, just put their freedom, like, in the hands of, like, a fear of Trump. Uh, you know, uh, with, with his wall and uh, with uh, his... Uh, uh, his, uh, his, his vitriol versus like uh, Muslims and immigrants. I mean, man, oh man. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely anti vonuin as it's not a self liberating position. It's it's completely a uh, uh, it's a completely passive one. Uh, will will waiting on others to you know uh, in quotes create your freedom for you. Uh, so it's uh, it's 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 completely completely uh, um, anti vonuin and, and as I said, I think it's gonna be counterintuitive because. Uh, yeah, anything anything Trump does, uh, yeah, just uh, the the first leftist that gets in there is going to you know just just you know <laughs> put in put in all of the stuff that he that he supposedly tore away. But uh, anyways, anyways, any other thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I think what you're getting at is basically it's a ping pong ball, right? Uh, that left right controlled paradigm, which is about as uh, phony as a two dollar bill. And so notice that um, Obama handed over. The, uh, the candle or the, the flame of power, as it were, to Trump. He handed the baton to Trump. And uh, much as George W. Bush handed the baton to Obama, and then before him it was Clinton, you see where this is going. You, you, mean, the yeah. ping, you mean the ping pong paddle? Yeah, the ping pong paddle. Yeah, actually, that's a better, better example than the baton. <laughs> and notice, too, and this is what I don't like about political crusading, it, 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 it imposes opportunity cost to such an extent that people get all obsessive and focused on promoting, uh, you know, their latest uh, strongman archetype instead of on real solutions, uh, whether, I mean, you mentioned about the border a moment ago. Well, what about privatizing the border, which I have written about before at, in detail about how to do that right here in Texas? That, that article's been out for years, but do the Trump people care about that? No. Uh, or, or even if someone was more along the lines of a, more of a limited government persuasion. I mean, where are the committees of safety? Oh wait, can't bother setting that up because Trump. You see the problem. It, yeah. The whole political crusading is itself a false solution, and most people really uh, take me to task on, or they try to take me to task on that. Even though I wrote an entire book basically saying how it's a false solution. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, that first quote was uh, from page eleven and written in nineteen sixty nine. So pre Libertarian Party. This next one quote. Now that a collective collective movementism, also called bullshit libertarianism and political crusading, has been discredited as a libertarian strategy, it is appropriate to re-examine strategies which treat freedom as an individually achievable way of life and marketable commodity. End quote. That's from page fourteen. Uh, uh page yeah, page fourteen. Uh, the year is nineteen seventy. So also uh, pre. LP and uh, uh, that definitely goes right in line with uh, with your with uh, actually I guess probably both of your books uh, the one on reformism and also the one on security culture because security culture isn't uh, going and begging others it's you know taking the initiative yourself and uh, making yourself uh, more invulnerable to coercion so uh, uh, <laughs> what what are your thoughts well obviously the collective movementism will will broach in more deeply in a future episode so what I'll mention just here in passing is that. You know, Rayo, notice that Rayo is kind of mentioning about the individually achievable way of life and marketable commodity. Essentially, I guess one way of describing that uh, in, in probably fewer words would be lifestyle changes. Because if you think about it, there are those elements of your life which are coercive, uh, at least to one extent or another, but then there are those other parts of your life which are voluntary. And I think what Rayo, at least in some sense, was getting at is that 
if you look at what's voluntary in your own life and then you make certain lifestyle changes and, and different choices, that can increase your overall level of freedom. And unfortunately, I think uh, some people are very, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, very cowardly and disregarding Rayo's advice and instead cowardly placing their faith in a strong man, whether it be uh, Clinton or Bush Jr. or Obama or as is currently the cu current uh, tyrant in chief, uh, Mr. Trump himself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I, I know what uh, uh, there's been, uh, you know, some, some vitriol towards uh, what some anarchist libertarians would call purists, you know, those who reject the political system altogether. And I, I, I don't think really, I mean, maybe, you know, uh, I think 1983 was, you know, uh, voluntarist.org. And, and when when that website was created uh, by, uh, you know, uh, Carl Watner, uh, Winnie McElroy, uh, George H. Smith and, and folks like that, uh, where, you know, that was kind of, you know, like uh, the, the purest, uh, I guess the, the purest sort of angle. Uh, uh, to it, and I think you've called it uh, voluntarism is the real libertarianism. But uh, I, I don't think people really know how far back this actually goes. Uh, and obviously, 1983 is you know pretty far back. But we're, this is you know we're talking in the 60s, 1960s now, and this has been a position held uh, for uh, you know for, for for quite a long time. And it's uh, it's it's more of an individualist. And, and you know, anarchists are supposed to, I, I guess, rather not. I, I shouldn't say that because syndicalists obviously shouldn't be individualists. Well, they should be, but they aren't. Uh, <laughs> But uh, then now I'm, now I'm, in, I'm, I'm, you know, now I'm tossing in my own uh, my preferences there. But well, they are very militant about their communes and trade unions. Let's be true, clear. true. But but you know th these these uh, these supposedly individualist free market anarchists should you know uh, th they should know better. Uh, they they really should know better, and they should see the issue with this this collective movementism, uh, as far as you know, like uh, all of these political political elections discussions on, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't I don't know, man, I don't know. It's they really should know better. And and also, to, to kind of conclude this point, I mean, yeah, Ray was talking about this in the 60s, so this isn't anything new at all. Uh, it really isn't. Yeah, the more thing, you know, the old phrase, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Indeed, indeed. Anything else there? Nah, no, nah, let's, let's keep on chugging. Okay, so uh, the next one, uh, uh, this is from page 11, the year 1969, still pre-libertarian party. Oh, my gosh. Fascinating how that works. <laughs> Quote, political crusaders try to categorize all non-crusaders as retreatists. The retreat concept is set forth by Harry Brown and Don and Barbara Stevens means disaster insurance, preparations to survive an expected future political economic disaster without substantially altering one's pre-disaster lifestyle. This is not the same as self-liberation. A change in lifestyle is not predicated on coming catastrophe. While a retreater and self-liberator may use some of the same techniques, their attitudes and general approaches are different. I am here concerned mainly with self-liberation, end quote. And this is kind of interesting, too, because when, when we first discussed Vanu on the Direct Action series, and obviously, like, we were talking about Ray and what he did, the the first the first accusation that that I that I kind of received and it was actually from someone I really didn't expect it to come from but there well Vaughn is a retreat of strategy shouldn't we you know try to build an Capistan mm. and I don't know that was so, so even you know a fellow proprietary anarchist kind of made that accusation but uh, I guess that that could just be you know lack of you know just just a, a complete ignorance on the subject essentially and maybe that maybe it was our fault you know maybe we didn't explain it well enough and we probably I mean to be honest I know I probably didn't because I. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There, there's been a lot of development since, uh, since you know, seven months ago. So, <sighs> well, there's also, well, yeah, but but then even even if that was the case, the default should not still be political crusading. I'm sorry, I don't think there's a way to get around that. I mean, look, if there's different strategies for uh, achieving freedom, just more generally speaking, you know, I, I guess you could say like there are the agorists. There are the political, politically crusading reformists, uh, you know, reformism being the political science term, or the same thing for political crusading, if they both mean the same thing. So you have like the agorist strategy, you have the politically crusading reformism strategy, and then you would have, well, Vanu, which is what this series is about. And maybe there's some others, but let's just look at those three. Well, I hate to say it, but anybody who tries to talk about uh, the other two, Vanu and or agorism, usually get um usually get finger pointed a lot for promoting i mean even even something like survivalism which is even something the constitute many of the constitutionalists do uh those guys get finger pointed and, and demonized unjustly i think for uh for all sorts of things and and the presumption is no you can't actually take responsibility for your own life so say the political crusaders 
and and actually do some lifestyle changes and and try to seek freedom in your own way and uh, you know <laughs> making different voluntary decisions uh, regarding like whom you associate with or where you live or or what kind of work you do and so forth. No, no, no. Don't try to actually uh, try to achieve financially independent early retirement. Don't try to actually be getting better physical you know, fitness and, and health and such. No, no, no. You see, what you really need to do is go to a Donald Trump rally. And see, that's that's the most that's the most frustrating part for me too, because this is something that you know it's still ongoing as as of like a few days ago, but uh, I, I it's. It might have been from I don't remember who it was from exactly, but maybe it was a, yeah it was definitely a Trump supporter. But uh, uh, the, the, this individual is saying how you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, philosophy is nice and all, but uh, there are people that have different beliefs than me, and they're trying to uh, they're trying to uh, impose those upon me. So anything I can do, uh, political or otherwise, to you know uh, mitigate those, uh, I'm I'm going I'm, yeah I'm I'm going to do kind of. What I kind of gather from that, and th yeah, this is kind of the most frustrating part, is yeah, I understand that people, you know, have different ideologies and they, they, they see different strategies as efficacious, even though I think they're completely absurd, such as political crusading and, you know, all of the Trump pumping, as, as you like to call it. That's exactly why I think self liberation is the most, like, the most, uh, why Vanu, uh, for example, is one of the, like, most viable strategies. Is there's no, you don't have to change society as it is, as, as Rayo called it. There doesn't need to be a cultural revolution. This can be an internal revolution. I don't like the word revolution, but that's a lot better than, you know, cultural revolution. A, a, a radical change in lifestyle, uh, such as Vanu, or as you kind of mentioned, uh, FIRE, financially independent early retirement. So it's. Well, a renaissance, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, and, 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 and see, this is kind of the, the other associated problems with all that is, and, and this is, and what I'm going to say is a lie, and then I'll explain what the truth is. The lie is that politically crusading is good, not because it, it's, it's moral or ethical, but because it's, it's, you get, it gets things done in the real world. Like what? I wrote an entire book debunking that myth and going like literally technique by technique, and there's only about a dozen of them or so. There's actually not very many. That's the other sad part about it. The actual smorgasbord of political crusading techniques is actually very rather white, rather limited, as opposed to direct action or, or other types of anti-political activity where it's like well in excess of, correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, well in excess of what, 90, 100, something like that? It's not yeah, it's, yeah, it's not even close. Not not even yeah not even in the same you know like a hemisphere galaxy. <laughs> right. So that entire Freeman Brill of direct action that you and I you know basically kind of put together and now in its third edition was in many ways inspired by an opposition to political crusading as as Rayo would put it uh, because we we're trying to find like what what else can be done to increase one's one's liberty or freedom or, and so forth or as is the case here with Vanu one's invulnerability to coercion. Um, you know, what are the methods available, even if it's just a, a directory or a list or something? And what you and I discovered and have made publicly available is that there are so many. The smorgasbord is, is by orders of magnitude, just sheer quantity, never mind quality, but just sheer quantity is not even close. And yet the political crusaders are so arrogant and so filled with hubris that they have, you know, look, they ain't all that, okay? That's the truth. The truth is the reformists don't have it all figured out because they're actually wrong. Ask yourself this, yeah. everybody. When was the last time a reformist, whether it's a Hillary Clinton supporter, a Bernie Sanders supporter, or since this is how the election turned out, a Donald Trump supporter, when was the last time any of them went on a political field trip ever to actually learn how government actually works practically in the real world? When was the last time they did that? Yeah, and I think something else important to mention here is uh, even, I mean, even the, uh, you know, the free market anarchists uh, sort of folks, the, the guys that have kind of, you know, clamored for Trump is uh, something something you often hear uh, from, especially free market anarchists, is how, uh, uh, like, commie, like, ANCOMs are so stupid they should be thrown out of helicopters. Like, they've been, tr like, they've, they've had, they've tried communism over and over and over again, hasn't worked, it's insanity, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what's what's even funnier here too is that the political crusaders are projecting then, or are projecting as well. Because how, how I would even say that you know politics more generally, because yeah, communism you know is a or communism and socialism they're political ideologies, right? Uh, so that's just you know a, more of a subset. So they're claiming that the subsets, uh, these these believers in the subset of, of political ideology as a whole. Uh, are you know insane for trying to, for trying the strategy to over and over again? Yet these same folks, 
who you know previously uh, you know rejected politics, say uh, at least at least some of them. Uh, now, because this this individual named uh, named a Fuhrer Trump is is in the picture, all of a sudden politics becomes viable again, uh, and all of the accusations they've made against uh, you know the communists and the socialists, as far as their insanity. Uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, doing that same thing now while also doing the same thing to the communists and the socialists. Isn't that just, isn't that just beautiful? Right, the hypocrisy. And obviously, you know, the topic of controlled schizophrenia we'll get into in a later episode. But I think just in transitory passing here, I think what you're kind of getting at is that that controlled schizophrenia very well might be the underlying uh, motivation, real motivation for said advocacy of political crusading and such, right? When you have people who mindlessly and very irrationally, and my favorite part, impractically, ladies and gentlemen, impractically promote things like petitioning and voting and protesting and filming cops and suing the government and running for public office and, 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 all that, you know, that, those list of about a dozen things or so I've written about before, it is a type of psychosis. I honestly, dude, I'll say this for the first time here. I think they're mentally ill, honestly, and it scares me because these people uh, are trying are basically giving further legitimacy to the state, which then uses its coercive, you know, hard power to hurt the rest of us who are actually are at least a little bit more rational. And it, and it also as, far as the future of humanity goes. It also further legitimizes, you know, the the efficacy of Vanu and and the things that Rayo said because. We mentioned, I think it was, I think it was last uh, uh, last week or maybe the week before, where we mentioned the nature versus nurture thing and how you know environments, uh, the the environment that you're that you're in, that you're ingrained in, uh, actually, you know, it does have a major impact on, I mean, your decision making and your thinking. So it further legitimizes the like, it it, it makes me understand Rayo's, you know, uh, you know, action so much more. Uh, he was, you know, I mean, he was submersed in this for a while. I mean, we, we read that up that article by Benjamin Bess, and, and, and Rayo's history has been la kind of laid out elsewhere, where, you know, Nathaniel Brain Institute, uh, uh, Ayn Rand's and some objectivist sort of stuff, and then he got kind of just so sick of this that, you know, he said, what the hell's going on here? Mm -hmm. These people claim to want freedom, and now they're doing all these insane things. You know, I'm just going to go live in a polyethylene tent in the woods. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Them, right? So look, no, definitely not. And so of all these so-called activists who are so filled with hubris and act like the very elitist and even globalists that they claim to oppose think that they, sw you know, sw you know swish <laughs> swishing their hips around acting as if they're all that, like they're somebody when the truth is, is that they're nobody just like me and just like you. But at least if you're nobody, uh, at least if you're somebody to me, uh, or excuse me, but as long as you recognize that you're a nobody, then you're somebody to me. Yeah. That until they get that little prima donna narcissism off their shoulders, then they are my enemy. I'm sorry. There, there is no shades of gray. Let's all, you know, sing kumbaya, you know, hook our hands together. And there, answer there, are, type stuff. there are different approaches to freedom and all paths lead the same. No, because they are, they are actually legitimizing the very coercion I'm trying to become invulnerable against. Exactly, exactly. Are, I mean, look, you t I mean, I know that your run-of-the-mill status and even just run-of-the-mill Americans, unfortunately, uh, the sheeple, right, that was mentioned earlier, they very much, many of them have Stockholm Syndrome with the state. And I would suggest and explicitly state here that the political crusaders have the most severe cases of Stockholm Syndrome with the state. Again, look at the Trump rallies. Look where they were chanting, Trump, Trump. Trump with and, and putting and you know thrusting their fists in the air like they're like they're two one or two you know hand maneuvers away from outstretching their hands with the palms down at a forty five degree angle if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And let me read this. This is the final quote we have here, and we we don't actually have much for this outline because we aren't going to need it. But uh, uh, but yeah, this last quote is so good because it, it ties in really well with with kind of what I was saying, you know, like and, and also kind of your, your agreeance. And you know, I don't blame Rayo for you know just saying fuck this, I'm done. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, quote, at times, Dr. G and I uh, crave association with more people, not only for economic benefits, such as pooling outside purchases and trips, but for interaction with different minds. But we have discovered that association with sheep people or bullshitters only makes us lonelier. 
Such association is like a drink of salt water to a thirsty man. We prefer just to be with the trees, flowers, birds, brooks, and the few people with whom we share values and goals. And quote. That's uh, page 92, on, uh, written in 1972. So that was actually after the creation of uh, uh, the the libertarian, uh, the anti-libertarian libertarian party. But I mean, I I sympathize with him too. Uh, I mean, I I I think one of the reasons I you know I, one of the many reasons I despise you know high level indoctrination colleges I was surrounded by these people who I mean they were more than willing uh, to you know they they were actually no not even more than willing they were advocating the government use violence against me. Uh, it's a really uncomfortable position to be in, uh, which is why you know that now that I'm not going there, I think my stress level has dropped, and I think that has something to do with it. But also, I mean, just associating with folks in general, I mean, who the hell am I supposed to, like, you know, hang out with and, like, uh, you know, befriend? Am I supposed to, like, uh, you know, just uh, say, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think communists and uh, free market anarchists can be friends, but that's just me. Uh, I don't want to either, uh, unless you know that. I, 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 yeah, I don't want. To, I don't want to either. I, I just don't want to. Uh, so you're, you're kind of left with uh, your run of the mill conservatives, uh, who uh, I mean, they have uh, all of their issues. Kyle and, and, and the listeners, uh, you guys, you guys know that we don't need to go into that too much. So, so you're kind of left with uh, you know the anti-libertarian libertarian party, which I've tried that. You know, I wouldn't associate with them for one meeting, and uh, I never want to speak with any of those folks ever again. And Kyle, I'm sure you can kind of share. I'm sure you share some sentiments but uh, uh, so then then you're kind of left with uh, uh, I mean you've got your uh, your supposed uh, uh, anarchists who uh, run for office or advocate for Donald Trump and uh, uh, and once you kind of weed out all of those folks where you say hey, yeah you know I, I really don't want to associate with them uh, you're, you're kind of left with uh, very minimal minimal options if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything and I think what we've noticed, and especially with this past election cycle, is quite uh, a bunch of people whom perhaps I made the mistake, and I'll take this one on the chin, that I perhaps thought that, for example, a Stefan Molyneux or a uh, Chris Cantwell or some other people who actually used, I, I thought they had principles, I thought they did stand for something, even if I didn't necessarily agree with them. Uh, about certain things, maybe even the no government thing being possible a uh, point of disagreement, maybe. But even at this point, that doesn't even necessarily matter because now there's a more fundamental issue with the fact that they're hypocrites and, and others like them because now they're saying, oh, you need to go vote. You have to go vote. I'm like, wait a minute, isn't that what the status have been telling us for years? I mean, hell. Yeah, I and it's, it's, even, it's even radicalized even more, I guess. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but anyways, we'll go with it. But it's, it's even gotten worse because it, it used to be like, uh, well, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, vote for the Libertarian Party. That's, I mean, that's all good. Now it's like, no, screw the Libertarian Party. Vote for these neocon war hawk conservatives. <laughs> uh, or no, not even conservatives, just like outright, you know, fascists. Like, it, it's, it's truly, truly astounding. Uh, but but also also very very dangerous and I don't think uh, I mean obviously the the left is fear it but the, for the wrong reasons I mean they're, they're they've got some loose screws in their head but uh, and, and no philosophical grounding but I mean uh, uh, a lot of folks really don't understand how how dangerous this is and, and and it's only getting worse you know administration after administration new ruler after new ruler or supposed or supposed ruler uh, and uh, I, I don't know I mean it, it's it's so not look at that look uh, doesn't look good as far as politics, but for self liberation, I definitely think it does. Well, last thing I'll just say about this, you know, I remember when Stefan Molyneux told people don't vote for Ron Paul, and that was back in two thousand eight. And the reason, and just to summarize his video series, which was called Ron Paul at the time, the reason, and people should, and by the way, I would suggest to the listeners they should watch Molyneux's. Ron Paul series, because this shows you the hypocrisy at play, especially compared with where he is now, that the argument of that entire series, simply put, was uh, you shouldn't vote for Ron Paul, not because Ron Paul is uh, a necessarily a terrible candidate, at least in one sense, even though he was a minarchist and met for limited government, the Constitution, all of that, but because by voting for Ron Paul, you legitimize the state and you shouldn't be doing that. Okay? That was the whole point of the Ron Paul series. Now, when you go to Molyneux now, it's all political crusading. 110% vote for Trump, vote, you know, vote for Trump. And now that Trump's the president, we need to support our president. All this collectivist language, you see the problem. And now it's like, well, gee whiz. I mean, at that point, I rather would have voted for Ron Paul. I mean, that's kind of the problem, dude, is that the, the, the humping the Trump has been so extreme. And I don't use that word lightly. It's been so extreme. I mean, the Trumpists are extremists, literally. 
they are so extreme in their advocacy for government, for tyranny, for, as I would see it, absolute despotism, as the founders themselves framed it or explained it. It's so extreme that I miss Ron Paul. I mean, I do. I, I mean, look, I've criticized Ron Paul in the past. I've written multiple articles relating to the scandals revolved, the real scandals revolving Ron Paul, like the ronpaul.com copyright scandal and some other things. But I got to say, Shane, with this utter hell that you and I and some other folks have been going through this past election cycle, I got to say, I miss Ron Paul. I really do. Because yeah, that things were a lot less insane, that's for sure. Oh my goodness, it, it was it was I was almost downright reasonable, and now I don't necessarily feel bad about criticizing uh, Ron Paul, but I'm just saying that this is this is a this is a de-evolution. This is a de-evolution of the alternative media as well, and it's just sad to see. And I wish things didn't turn out this way, but I think there's also a larger question of you know where is this alt right going in terms of its political crusading? I mean. I mean, Trump was very mean towards Muslims. I mean, are Muslims now going to get deported, even if they were natively born? I mean, where exactly is this going in, in the end game? Hell, I was on the White House uh, what website, which I probably shouldn't have done for reasons of security culture, but I was on there <laughs> just out of curiosity because they track, they, they track and do the lock and latch thing, but that's more of a technical issue. Anyway, I was on there and they'd be like, we need to support our police. We need to support our military. Uh, another issue thing is, uh, you know, we're going to make America, I guess, fascist again, I think. And, and by the way, as far as the slogan goes, as far as like politically crusading slogans, first of all, Trump actually plagiarized off of, I think it was, was it Ronald Reagan or some conservative uh, earlier political campaign? Something like that, yeah. He actually plagiarized it. Yeah, so there's your first problem. Is that we're not, and again, I'm not talking about copyright. Plagiarism is a form of fraud, even if we were living without government right now. It's still a form of fraud. Uh, somebody else had, uh, did uh, Make America Great Again. The name's just, uh, but it's on Wikipedia if you folks want to follow up on that. And, and the other thing, too, it's just, if you were to come up with a better slogan, I mean, how about, let's make America free again. How about that for a damn slogan? Make America free again. But, oh, no, can't do that. No, we have to support basically the reincarnation of Alexander goddamn Hamilton. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty pretty incredible in, in a really, really bad way. So uh, I guess the next thing I kind of want to do, in, 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 unless you have something else to say, uh, I guess, in regards to uh, those quotes and, and, and how and, and Rayo's kind of thoughts on political crusading, but I really want to get into, you know, kind of laying out the history and maybe what was going through Rayo's mind when he was writing these articles. Uh, so do you have anything else on uh, the uh, the previous, uh, previous discussion or want to move forward? I could literally talk about that type of stuff for hours, but for purposes of but to keep this kind on the listeners' ears, uh, let's let's keep uh, going on here. Okay, okay. So uh, as I made very very clear, there there was only one article, and it was that very last one, and that was after, that was in 1972. That's when uh, you know they were uh, when Radio and uh, Doctor Gatherer were uh, you know kind of uh, <laughs> uh, withdrawing in a sense. You know they're kind of uh, working towards the disappearance that happened in 1974. Uh, so uh, uh, so yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> I mean that was the only one that was after the uh, the, the founding of the LP. So I, I guess one thing I, I want to mention here is that uh, obviously the the, dis the the discussions between you know uh, self liberators, libertarians, anarchists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, back in those days, pretty much had to be done through publications and conferences. So I think that may have been Rayo's motivation for writing some of these very very hostile uh, and derisive these hostile articles and you know putting forth these derisive labels. I think he kind of got fed up with reading these publications about uh, uh, about how uh, you know we we need a libertarian party because you know we've got to be involved with politics or we're not going to get our voices heard or whatever 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 the uh, arguments. Were. I'd love to get those publications to actually read to to, to find out for sure. But uh, obviously we don't we don't uh, have the luxury of of that right now do we Kyle but uh I'm guessing Rayo Rayo's frustration is much like ours right now Kyle uh I'm guessing once uh once there was a discussion of a, of a liber libertarian party he kind of uh you know just uh not even went off the handle but just said you know screw this I'm not gonna be nice to these people anymore yeah and and considering you know uh you know Trump becoming the alleged president of the United States although I guess the electoral votes were not fraudulent although I guess there's always a risk of that um I I'm starting to feel a lot like Rayo at this point um and and also one other thing too 
you know, it's one thing for there to be a party archy, you know, rule by party, which is what the LP is. What's happened this electoral cycle is is noticeably different in that there's been an entire, I think it's fair to say, and perhaps you've noticed this too, an entire schism within the alternative media between various content producers, whether they're more well-known or, or more obscure, there's been a very sharp schism. And I think there was even that one video that Derek Rose did with uh, with at least two other content producers where you know bros was just trying to get to the bottom and figure out where this schism was coming from and and he was kind of covering that and, and even he because again Derek bros is very much against political crusading always has been as far that's, as I understand that's, it. that's one reason I love him yeah he's one of the very few that you know actually remains uh, uh, remains consistent on that note right and even and he was getting concerned about it and so being a good investigative journalist he was trying to track down some of the other content producers who shall remain unnamed for other reasons yep and and was just trying to kind of make sense of it and and those two other individuals were um showing their true colors as far as uh i i would like to put it so that that's kind of where we're at it's you know when people become hypocrites and then when they are put on the spot and said, okay, you, your principles were this, now you're doing that, what gives? Then they make all sorts of excuses in order to make themselves look good because they don't want to either be ostracized or otherwise uh, lose out their revenue potential, especially when you consider the Google AdSense money through YouTube and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I want to, and you've written, uh, uh, you've written and transcribed some things on this. Maybe you, uh, maybe not, but I know you mentioned these these two quotes. But so yeah, I, I think even further verification uh, for you know uh, as far as you know why how how right Rayo was uh, in, in his kind of uh, writings. He mentioned function determines form, means determine ends, and I think that was probably the major driver to you know his, his separation from uh, from those uh, you know probably controlled schizos uh, that were you know libertarians or anarchists at that time. Uh, and uh, I think I think kind of uh, if, if we kind of just look at uh, uh, and I'll let you read these because you're, you're, yeah, th this has kind of been uh, stuff that you've discovered. But uh, David Nolan, I think what he said in 1971, and also what he said uh, with uh, on, on Lou Rockwell's show in 2008, uh, I think it's very, very revealing. And uh, I think Rayo just kind of saw that, you know, from from the get go. Uh, <laughs> as far as uh, you know, that this isn't going to lead to a good outcome. It's not going to lead to more freedom. It's going to lead to an, a lot of you know, uh, uh, a lot of spinning the wheels, chasing chasing their own tails, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, this controlled schizophrenia is going to lead to you know even more absurd justifications, uh, and you know even more uh, radical ideas that are that are that are actually anti freedom, uh, such as you know like uh, fear of Trump. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, why don't you read uh, those two quotes? Uh, or actually, read the first one by Nolan, and we can discuss that uh, if there's anything, and then we'll we'll go on to that second one. Right. And, and just just for some background on this, just a little bit, um, you know, you and I have gone on our respective, you know, circuits of political field trips. And as part of those circuits, uh, you know, there were the reports on uh, the anti-libertarian libertarian party. Right. You wrote one. I've written one and, and so forth. So we've had. So just for the listeners to understand, uh, this isn't like theoretical stuff purely. This is actually practical experience you and I have had in two different portions of the country regarding the same, organiza uh, same organization. And so when I was writing my own political field trip report, I did some background and discovered what David Nolan, the founder of the uh, LP himself said. And so let's, let's look at that. So David Nolan in 1971 said, quote, now one may argue that politics in an Im is an immoral game that political approaches are inherently coercive, that one cannot achieve pure ends by impure means, and so forth. But the fact nonetheless remains that we live in a society whose shape is largely determined by political processes. Our chances of achieving goals is not great. Many libertarians have recognized this fact, of course, and have expended hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of man hours in political activities. But to date, we have reaped only a minuscule reward for our efforts, close quote. So I think you can kind of see that he was essentially saying that, uh, well, we need to have our little own partyarchy of sorts. We shouldn't be trying to persuade, you know, the Republicrats or the Demo Republicans, if you know what I mean, uh, from basically supporting, you know, any sort of notion of laissez-faire anything, you know, economic or, or personal liberty of any kind, right? And so when you fast forward, I think something like 37 years or so, I think something on that, 
on that time frame. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, 37 year experiment, yeah. Yeah, so if you fast forward 37 years, you have the same individual, the founder of the Almighty LP in 2008 saying the following to Lou Rockwell, quote, "We have unfortunately created or the party has created a little class of mini bureaucrats who are more concerned with keeping their job and perpetuating the institution as an institution and raising money than they are with spreading the message." Now we're down to the level of people who are, I think, for the most part, well-intentioned, but when compared to those men, and in context, he was referring to Murray Rothbard earlier, when compared to those men are several orders down the intellectual scale, and they're absorbed with minutia, then they are concerned with fundraising, and they are afraid to say anything that might scare people, because that might keep people from voting for us. So it's become a very timid organization in the last six or eight years, close quote. Now notice that last part, the last six or eight years. So he said that in 2008. Let's do a little math, uh, ladies and gentlemen, shall we? 2008, he made that quote, he made that statement, public statement on the Lou Rockwell show. Lou Rockwell being, of course, a prominent ANCAP himself, uh, part of the Ludwig von Mises Institute, or at least he used to be, I'm not quite certain. So in 2008, that's what David Nolan said. So eight years ago would be 2000, or if you went six years, that would be what, 2002? I think I'm going to find my math right. So between 2000 and 2002 was when this very timid little organization stuff started popping up, and then Nolan only mentioned it like over half a decade later when it was safer to do so. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so the question is, like, with this 37-year experiment, where exactly has this party archy of the LP led us exactly? And here's a great question for anybody to ask themselves. How many elections, how many public offices have been won by individuals, by candidates running on an LP ticket? Just how many? It's a simple question. How many public offices, how many elections have been won by people running under the banner of the LP? And I think that answer will basically tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not only, you know, uh, not advancing the cause of freedom as, you know, Rayo kind of, you know, uh, I guess <laughs> was was aware of. And, and also uh, uh, you and I, Kyle, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, we've been we've been talking about this for for at least a couple few years. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, my so so yeah, not so yeah, not not only not only is it you know not advancing the cause of freedom. I think it's actually it's it's actually negatively impacting it because uh, it, it and I've said this before, but people are sick of politics. You know, they're sick of the Republicans and Democrats. So what what do you do? Well, yeah, give them another political party to go vote in. One that has had literally no success, and one that has maybe gotten like a handful or like you know minuscule number of people into actual like local offices or whatever. But uh, uh, it's it's so deceptive, and it further it it further legitimizes the state, and it also. And it, and it's also a cruel, deceptive trick. I mean, this is not something you do to a fellow human being. Jesus. Yeah. No, but, but, but they would have you believe that uh, if you are politically concerned, let me put it that way, if you are politically concerned for your freedom, then of course you must engage in political crusading, you must uh, use the reformist strategy uh, that of course entails techniques like petitioning and voting and uh, uh, grassroots lobbying, I didn't mention that one yet, grassroots lobbying, uh, Chris Cantwell did his own experiment with that and People can read my article on that and see exactly how that little experiment turned out in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, you know, grassroots lobbying, um, you know, people getting really obsessive about the news cycle because, oh, now we have to learn about the 20 million awful thing the establishment did to infringe on our liberties this week. And of course, notice that with all of the, these different versions of political crusading and endlessly bickering with people, not a properly moderated debate where where the listeners or, or viewers or whatever can actually hear both sides of an issue and then make up their own minds, but rather the endless bickering, bicker, 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 and nothing is resolved, there are no answers, it's just revolving bickering, and then it's just people just taking sides with one of the bickerers, and which, which you know, what, uh, what rhetoric falls softly on their own ears. And yeah, it's, it's, it's almost... And that all of this increases opportunity costs, which is what I think you were getting at. 
Yeah, and it, it's almost like like how cruel of a trick this is. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, think of a, a good analogy here, but but it, it's almost like uh, uh, it's like uh, oh, women, are you guys sick of being? Are you guys sick of get be getting beaten? Well, just you know, just just uh, you know, uh, marry a smaller guy and have him beat you instead. Uh, his punches won't hurt as hard, and the bruises won't be as deep. That's kind of that's kind of how I that's kind of how I see it. Like it's it's such a cruel, deceptive trick. These people are. Uh, God, I, I I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Nature, and this is the nature of American authoritarianism as it is today. This is the reality of the situation that you and I and even, let's say, hypothetically, Jim Bob down the street is dealing with. This, you know, it is what it is. A is A. And so understanding that kind of is, um, I don't want to say making peace with it necessarily, because there, there's a connotation there I don't necessarily mean, but it's, it's being objective, let me put it that way. It's being objective about what is actually there, and then, of course, trying to kind of uh, figure out, like, what do you want to do about it uh, in, in one sense or another, right? I mean, the agorists have their particular strategy, that, and, of course, they're very anti-political, which, which is definitely a good sign, and they're kind of doing their approach, which definitely is a, a healthy, healthier option, right? Um, and then, of course, there's there's Vanu, which is what this series is about. And, and, and of course, and who knows, maybe other people will come up with other forms of direct action of one kind or another. But suffice it to say, Shane, I think what really concerns me, and this concerned Rayo too, was how the default was assumed to be the reformist strategy, was assumed to be political crusading. And again, you know, my first book, you know, An Elusive Phantom of Hope, A Critique of Reformism, I think that was in 2015 when that came out, wasn't it? Like, yeah, I mean, oh, that's a while back a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, the whole point of that book was just going line by line, technique by technique. You know, it's like, or hell, how about uh, writing your Congress critter? How about that? Oh, yeah, we're going to write our Congress critter and tell them how to vote. And then because if we flood them with letters, then they'll vote the, the way we want them to. And thus we can preserve our liberty and all of this hyperbolic garbage. I mean, my goodness, even the minarchist patriots now, the constitutionalists, are now talking. I was listening to a podcast just last night about a, just a completely different topic, uh, more, more concerned around science and, and more particularly more medical issues. And, and at one point, the, the, one of the guests was just kind of in a very blasé manner talking about, well, and hopefully our president will be able to protect us from whatever the military industrial complex was doing this week. And all I could think of is, you know, the guy actually said when he was on a particular uh, radio program that he was very militaristic and he's going to beef up the military if he happens to win the election. You do understand that, right? Yeah. So you guys who are worried about, like, the eugenicist soft-kill bioweapons, uh, which is what the topic was, like, why would you think that, you know, the Donald is going to lift a finger to stop the very people that you claim to be opposed to? Like they're, they're, it's like. Do oh God! Don't, 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 don't give him any ideas, God! Like, <laughs> like wait, he's already drone bombed somebody, at least a couple people, uh, carrying on, you know, that uh, that drone bombing legacy of uh, of Obama's. Uh, so, so that's already bad enough. But don't get like, bu like eugenics, bioweapon drone. Come on, don't give him those ideas. <sighs> God, but but no, you're 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 ex you're exactly right. I mean, it's it's it's, and this is what's promoted on 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 college campuses too. It's like, oh, you don't like the way things are going? Well, go vote. I mean, don't you know do anything that well, don't take the initiative yourself and actually you know like uh, change your own life. Don't take the initiative and uh, uh, or even do something like what Cal Moly is doing with Liberate RVA, even though it's it's kind of, it's in in some ways it's it's not very funny. But but either way, there's no initiative to it other than like going t taking initiative to go and scratch shit in a booth. Uh, like that that is what's promoted if you want change what you do is you go vote and you participate in politics and that is just the default just as in college moral relativism uh is the the default position of ethics like it's it's so it's so yeah. backwards it's so notice, backwards notice too that any form of strategic withdrawal which was actually the very practical basis behind voluntarism which of course is 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 what your ideology is um it was is is routinely and systematically and i would even go further and say diabolically just vilify like how dare you cancel your voter registration how dare you pull your kids out of the public schools how dare you not re-enlist in the military if you were already in it you know a conscientious objection even if, if that happens to be applicable you know how dare you 
pull away from the system in any way, shape, or form. How dare you try to revoke your consent to be governed in any sense of that concept, if, if it is indeed a worthwhile concept? I mean, how dare you? I mean, that, I mean just for the listeners, here, here's a fun experiment you can do. Go to your politically crusading friends of any flavor. I don't care what their ideology, what their uh, professed ideology is, but it especially works really well on authoritarians, usually um, uh, conservatives and progressives particularly. And just, just mention about canceling voter registration. Just that one thing. And just watch the reactions. I mean, just it's, it's almost, it's like even mention it just even as a legal remedy. And especially if you listen to our previous episode on legal interstices, just mention canceling your voter registration and just watch the reactions. I oh, God, yeah. I uh, it's I it's I, fun. <laughs> I wish I would be there for every single time that that kind of thing would be mentioned. And, and just like, you know, literally like microwave some popcorn, you know, sit in a chair and just like lean back a little bit and just watch the fireworks with, with all the political crusaders just getting all uh, excitable. And, and, and trying to vilify anybody promoting strategic withdrawal. I mean, it's, 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 all, it's so bad, it's almost entertaining is what I'm getting that, at. That, that, that and the excuses, too. When I promoted, when I, like, uh, I guess when, I don't know, LUA started to get a little bigger and I started promoting canceling the voter registration to, to more folks, uh, the, the, the main response they got was, well, if I cancel my voter registration, I'll be, I'll be removed from the jury rules. Like, that, that can't happen. I'm going to say something here, Kyle, and I, 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 I'd like your thoughts on it. Jury nullification is political crusading. What are they trying to do? They're trying to change the laws on the books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not a, it's not a legal interest, especially for the people who listen to our previous episode. And it's, and it's, it's off, it's awfully coercive too. But that's that's a story for that's something for another time. But I mean, even even jury nullification advocates, I mean, I, I would say they're political crusaders too. They're yeah. trying to, they're, tr they're whether it's changing the laws or changing the legal system. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, yeah. my favorite, although just as a in transitory passing here, just for purposes of time, I find it humorous that the jury nullification nullification is, and I've actually debated one of them, or at least I tried to, um, uh, when I was on another broadcast, was just when I mentioned that, hey, you know, your jury nullification thing doesn't work, I have some concerns, and, you know, the prisons are not being emptied out if indeed this nullification thing was working, and I was just vilified. And it was kind of interesting, too. Like, even if I was wrong, I shouldn't have been, I, I personally think I should have been vilified like that. I mean, wouldn't it make sense? Let me put it this way. Let me play the other side for a second. Wouldn't have it made more sense if some of the jury nullification people, and not just the guy that, that I was trying to debate, but even just other people, if they were like, hey, dude, look, I think you're misunderstanding some things. You see, here's what we want to do long term with, with jury nullification. We want to empty out the prisons and like listing goals or something. But that didn't happen. It was just uh, the closest thing he said was something along the lines of, uh, I think James Babb said something about, we want to save a few asses. I think was the actual phrase he used, and he said that repeatedly too. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, "That's it." And 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 then of course I got accused of trying to abolish the state through jury nullification, which was a claim I never made. I just simply said, "Can we at least start emptying out the jails? Because at least that's achievable." And then just completely, just like all the other debates I participated in, uh, just a lot of times my opponents will just ignore everything I've said and just steamroll right over me and just mention stuff that they were all going to mention anyway. And in that sense, I kind of just analogously, I do feel kind of like Ron Paul on the floor of the Congress, right? It doesn't matter anything I say, you know, uh, you know, when I, when I've got the podium, as it were, when I've got the microphone and such, I just get steam, I just get rolled on yeah. right over. I mean, so in that sense, I can kind of sympathize with Dr. Paul in that way. But I mean, that's, I mean, that is the reality of what it is. Anybody who talks about strategic withdrawal, uh, you will find yourself being a pariah more often than not. And I'm sorry to say, I wish we lived in a world, honestly, I wish we lived in a world, I wish we lived on a continent that wasn't filled with people who treated others like that. I wish they were, I wish they were at least tolerant, minimally tolerant. Like, like you, know, you were mentioned, I think this was mentioned earlier, but like the multiple paths to liberty type of thing. Mm -hmm. I wish they acted that way, but they're actually very intolerant. And they're un and I would say they're unjustifiably judgmental. You know, it's one yeah, yeah, that they're, they're yes, yeah, so yeah, the, their path to liberty is the only way. 
uh, their their path to freedom is the only only way, and they're they're gonna say the same thing about uh, about us too, Kyle. But you know what's great about Vanu mm -hmm. is there there's no there there's no dictates. There's no saying okay, Vanu has to be done in this specific manner, or you're not doing Vanu. Vanu is simply about it becoming as invulnerable to coercion as you possibly can be, and depending upon your lifestyle, you can do it right. You did. You can go live out in the middle of the woods in a polyethylene tent. Or poly, what, yeah, polyethylene tent, or you can, you know, Vanu in the cities. You can, you can, uh, you know, be a perpetual. Tri you, there, there are a lot of things you can do, and uh, that that could be considered Vanu. And there's no arbitrary dictates from us saying, "Oh, you aren't a Vanuist because you you chose this path." Uh, or you aren't a Vanuist because uh, uh, you didn't do what we did. Uh, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. It's just as becoming as invulnerable to coercion as you possibly can be uh, in your current life situation. Uh, and, uh, and and obviously, even in your current life life situation, Vanu requires a lifestyle change. So th there are going to be there are going to be some some drastic changes, but uh, uh, it doesn't have to be anything as radical as, as what Rayo did. Uh, but again, I mean. This isn't uh, <laughs> this isn't something like uh, uh, like what they what they like to what some of these folks like to do like uh, you have to vote or you know you're against liberty or, or some absurd absurd uh, notion like that. Well, one of my favorites, and we'll get into this uh, later when we do the collective movementism episode. But you're hurting the movement. I've heard that uh -huh. many times, and so that'll be just a little teaser for that episode. But you're hurting the movement, and it's like, dude. Get the moat out of your own eye first before you start pointing fingers. I don't think I'm asking a lot here. I I definitely don't think you. Uh, I don't think, definitely don't think you are either. I'm looking through our some of our conclusionary points. I think we kind of uh, beat the you know, beat the hell out of these already. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but but I guess uh, uh, any any other closing thoughts, man. I would just say that, you know, going into the future when, you know, if the listeners, you know, end up watching, you know, actual real debates or pseudo debates or just, you know, good old fashioned people bickering, you know, in a, in a public manner uh, in one form or another, really don't try. A lot of times there'll be a tactic that a lot of sophists will use when they're being disingenuous and they'll try to distinguish out, uh, oh, well, we're so different from each other. But really, sometimes it's better to focus on what their similarities are. And as was the case with one particular one fairly recently, and I think you know what I'm referring to, Shane, if one of them says, well, you got to vote for Trump because we have to worry about, you know, the illegals crossing the border and or Muslims because something, something, something welfare state, therefore you must vote and be a political crusader. And then the other guy who, well, he was accused of being an anarchist dictator uh, come 2020, when he's going to run for uh, uh, the presidency, I guess is what he's going to try and do. You know, it's kind of like, well, wait a minute. You guys claim to be so different from each other, but when it comes down to brass tacks, if you take just ideology and put it aside for a moment, in terms of the actual action, remember what Sam Conkin said in 85, guys, watch for the action. The action here is you have one guy saying political crusading, vote, 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 because, you know, we have to defend yourselves from the welfare bums. And then you have the other guy saying, basically, I'm an anarchist dictator in 20, you know, or I want to be one come 2020 so I can provide for an orderly dissolution of the federal government. <laughs> yep. And it's like, OK, so aside from your rhetoric, some flowery, some rather... Um, you know, the point is that they want to become part of... And see, this is the problem when people try to become part of the state in some way, shape, or form, or they start making deals with the state, too. Because uh, that's where your special... member Ron Paul warned about this, too. Those special interest lobbyists, where they try to seek uh, undue favors and all sorts of... And that's where actually the generation of a lot, a lot of graft, corruption, and pull comes from, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly when you have people who may have meant well at some point in their lives, but when push came to shove, and they started really realizing the realities of power and what even many political theorists have called real politic with a K. Look it up on Wikipedia. It's rather important. When they start butting, you know, butting their heads and start realizing just how nasty it can get with real politic, then they begin, a lot of times they'll begin basically sacrificing their principles and becoming hypocrites. I think there was even a phrase from a certain uh, Netflix original series, Shane, where uh, one of the where the protagonist was said something along the lines of uh, the road to power is paved with hypocrisy. <laughs> yep. 
excellent line from that series. But yeah, the road to power is paved with hypocrisy. And I think that is the long and short of political crusading, is that they, are, they may claim they're about liberty, they may claim they're about freedom, they claim they might care about the evolution of the human race, but at the end of the day, their desire, their lust for power turns them into authoritarians, the very same ones who are trying to make us uh, buckle under their coercive uh, reign. Indeed, indeed. So uh, I'll close that with this. Just real, real short, real short. Political crusading is a bullshit strategy, and bullshit libertarianism isn't libertarianism. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, folks. Uh, we certainly hope you enjoyed it and found it valuable. I mean, this is probably going to be one of the very few, uh, maybe the next, maybe the next one too. Uh, but uh, it's going to be one of the few where uh, uh, something that really, you know, fires Kyle, and, Kyle, and, uh, Kyle and I up uh, is, is really this subject of political crusading. Because it's it's so frustrating, so frustrating. But uh, uh, but yeah, we definitely hope you found it valuable, and uh, we're one step closer uh, to uh, to the actual action part of this, which we, we've already we've we, we've kind of covered it in passing. But uh, uh, yeah, we haven't even gotten to the uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, practice part of uh, Vareo's book of on the search for personal freedom. So next week we'll discuss a phenomenon coined by uh, Rayo called controlled schizophrenia. Uh, that's something we referred to a couple times tonight, and uh, it's certainly something that uh, is very likely afflicting these bullshit libertarians and political crusaders. So make sure to go check out the website, vonnypodcast.com, and please consider leaving us a positive review on iTunes if you enjoyed the show. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you next week. Podcast dot com.